Hi, if you're someone who's just had weight loss surgery and you're wanting to take out this time while you're recovering from the surgical procedure, you want to start planning your life in a way that you want to get over the challenges of yo-yo dieting and the stress and the struggle that comes with regaining the weight again and again, then I've I'll urge you to watch this presentation with undivided attention right to the end, because I truly believe that this is a phase of your life where you can actually change the trajectory of how your future looks like. Allow me to share my presentation with you because that will help you clarify the point that I'm trying to make. Well, you are currently recovering after weight loss surgery, whether you had it a few days ago or a few weeks ago, doesn't matter. But what is important is that this initial phase of adaptation and recovery will create a lot of changes within you. And my purpose of this presentation is to inspire you, to motivate you, that you use this time to create real transformation. This time is crucial because I can tell you, you are quite motivated to change your old habits. I urge you to do these three things. While you're recovering, try and think on paper. You will be having a lot of ideas that this is how you want to change things that may not be working for you in the past, but think on paper. Try and reflect on those old habits that did not serve you. And very importantly, don't make radical plans to change everything in one week or one day. No, just make small changes. This is how we want to make the change because we want to have slow, sustainable changes. So with that in mind, I want a commitment from you. The commitment is to become a better version of yourself in all ways, in all, meaning all aspects of yourself, the physical, mental, emotional, and even spiritual. Yes, you heard me right. And spirituality does not necessarily mean going to church every Sunday morning or going to the mosque or the temple, whatever it may be for you. And I'll explain that in a moment in my slide. But I think if you don't look at these four aspects of your being and you're just stuck on how much do you weigh on the scales and that's where you check, that's like your barometer. Well, I can tell you, you're going to be disappointed. You're going to be frustrated. So please stick with me and please allow me to share these next few slides with you. So the question that becomes is how do we do this? So the first aspect is the physical. Physical is your body. The mental is your thinking, your thought processes. Your emotions are your feelings. How are your feelings uh, determining the choices that you're making. And spirituality really is a connection with yourself. Let's start with the physical first, you know, because that's the easiest and the simplest one for many people to grasp. The physical, as I said, is to do with your body. And I know after surgery, there may be pains, there may be a risk of infection, you might be worried about, you know, whether you're vomiting, regurgitating, and those sort of things can be dealt with by your clinician, by your surgeon, by your doctor. I'm sure there is a nurse who has contacted you. If not, they will be contacting you and they will make sure that your physical needs are met. That means if there is any issues with pain, they can send you prescriptions for medications and things like that. But here are three big ticket items that I want you to start thinking about as far as your body goes. Number one is nutrition. 
you will be changing your diet in terms of textures, in terms of, you know, uh, the consistency of the foods that you're consuming. So make sure that you are following the dietary advice. Have a balance in your diet, not just protein and just obsessing about protein, because that's what I see many, many times, you know. Eat more plants and less animals. An amazing study done from Harvard Medical School, which is called Nurses Health Study, which has been running for over 44 years now, tells us that eating more plants and less animals is good for your health span and your longevity. Also, please make sure you prioritize sleep. Sleep time is recovery time. You need good quality sleep. So avoid screens two hours before bedtime. Take the television out of your bedroom if it lives in the bedroom and sleeps in the bedroom with you. And lastly, make a commitment to have movement, some sort of a movement while you're recovering, just walking around your house or walking in the house if that's comfortable, doing some deep breathing exercises, even like, you know, sitting on the chair and flexing your hands and lifting your hands above your heads. These are very good exercises to do. Movement is a must. Let's go to the next level down, which is mental. This is where you will have the luxury of time while you're recovering. And this is where I want you to start thinking that time is a very valuable resource. Time is never coming back. And whatever you are feeding your mind on, whether it's TikTok, Instagram videos, or YouTube, whatever you may be watching, you know, understand that that is what your mind is feeding on and it is going to be determining your thinking. I would urge you to think about making reading a habit. When you read something, you are associating with the author's ideas. You could read paper books. If you struggle to read paper books, you can read an audio. You can listen to an audio book. There is another, um, you know, a website that I came across, and there are many such apps available. They condense the books for you. So it's called, one of them is called short form. You know, you can just use that and you essentially kind of, you know, listen to the book's idea in 15 minutes. I also believe taking out time and spending it in nature is critical for our mental well-being. Whether you go for a, wide, uh, or a walk or a hike, you go for a cycle ride, you go for swimming or running, you choose. But the choice is yours. Do carve out some time to spend in nature. When it comes to emotions, this is your feelings, you know. How your feeling is determining the choices that you're making. And, you know, most of the time, it is who we are associating with is determining our feeling. Ask yourself, the people that you mostly associate with, are they uplifting or are they deflating? Do they take the energy out of you or do they fill you up with energy? Also, do you mostly react or do you respond? Do you ever take out time to reflect? And this is where practices like meditation, mindfulness, journaling allow you to understand how you process your emotions. And lastly, I often say, do you have a hobby? If you don't, maybe it's time to think about picking up one, you know. You might have had an interest in dance or music or singing, whatever you choose. And last and perhaps maybe the most subtle one of these is spiritual health, you know. If you do not pay attention to your spiritual health, you will feel this frustration that comes from a disconnection with your real self. This is your higher self that is nudging you to go and do things that you were sent here to do. The questions here are, have you ever wondered who you really are? What are your values? Do you have a goal in life? Or are there things that you're willing to stand for? Once again, it comes back to your values. What do you stand for? Do you actually take out time for self-care? This is a very important question because most of us are on go, go, go mode, you know. Self-care is not selfish because it's important to recognize that you cannot pour from an empty cup. You got to find out whether your cup is full or empty. And last and most importantly, do you believe that you have gifts which 
with which you could serve others. This is like, you know, you're doing something to make a contribution to someone such as teaching. You might be uh, given a gift of uh, the ability to share things with someone in a way that they understand it by just hearing you. Or you might want to volunteer somewhere. So these are aspects that are really important to understand. Please make it, let me be very clear about it, that most people fail not because of lack of desire, but because of lack of commitment. I know you have a desire. That's why you went through the whole risk of having weight loss surgery, gone through the pain and all the challenges that come with organizing surgical procedure. But this is the time now that I urge you to commit yourself to follow up. We know that a lot of people, after they've had their surgery, they just drop off after a few appointments after the procedure. They're not committed to long-term follow-up so that their team can hold them accountable or keep them accountable in a, in a healthy, nurturing manner, not with critical eyes, not at all. We are here to support you, but we want you to understand that motivation is what gets you started, but commitment is what keeps you going. The team at Body Genesis Institute is committed to your long-term success. We truly believe that we are partners in your success. And we wish you a speedy recovery and look forward to seeing you in New You. Please do not hesitate to reach out to us should you have any concerns. Because at the end of the day, our job is to help you transform. Take care and stay safe. And I look forward to seeing you soon.